breaking travel news. Travel Talk with Phil Blizzard, talking to industry experts and decision makers. For this edition, we're looking at the sector of cruising and joining us is Helen Beck. Thanks very much for doing so. Um, you've got a lot of uh, expertise in the area of cruising <laughs> and we're going to go into the crystal ball now. At Ooh. the beginning of 2014, look ahead during the next 12 months and what could be expected by the cruise sector globally. Oh, um, in exciting year as always. You know the cruise industry, we never sit on our laurels. So I think we're all looking forward to a very uh, productive, profitable, satisfactory uh, 2014. Um, again, investment has gone in a new build. We for Royal Caribbean International have uh, our new ship, Quantum of the Seas, arriving late season. Um, there's been a little bit of shift in deployment and capacity, so the Caribbean is increasing in focus again. Okay. Uh, Europe is continuing its growth, but we're seeing that the you know, Caribbean is making a bit of a comeback. So a little bit of shift and change going on. So as you say, change in deployment, mm. shift again. And what about new entrants? I mean, there's talk of Japan. Yes. Um, interestingly, Princess Cruises, of course, are deploying a vessel now dedicated to, to the Japanese market, mm. which uh, I think we're all interested uh, to see how that's developing. We ourselves have, uh, as Royal Caribbean, have committed ships to Asia to specifically grow the China and Asian markets as well. So I think you're seeing sort of somewhat um, global diversification in our source markets now as well. You mentioned Quantum, mm. you're receiving the, the vessel latter part of 2014, where's it likely to be deployed? Excellent. Well, she's being built in Germany, yeah. in Maiwerf, so we'll have a little bit of um, hoopla, so to speak, welking and her yeah. through Europe. Yeah. And then she will go transatlantic to home port out of New York. So she'll be based out of Cape Liberty, which is our port uh, mm. for New York City. And uh, we'll sail in the Caribbean, um, doing a range of nine and five night itineraries. Okay. Well, we're talking here at the Sea Trade Conference mm. in Abu Dhabi. So how do you see the Middle East standing up next year? This has been probably one of the most encouraging uh, forums, cruise forums for the Middle East that I've attended over the past right. few years. There's a real sense of the region coming together um, to really promote the destination, the region as a destination, mm. rather than um, each individual port focusing on its own growth strategy. And for a cruise line, that's really encouraging because for us, it's, we, we don't just sail to one port. <laughs> We need a whole range sure. of ports yeah. to create an itinerary. So by the region coming together in this way, um, it really gives us a lot of encouragement and faith for, for a strong yeah. future growth here. One of the challenges in this part of the world for the cruise operators is the costs involved, which are often higher than other parts of the world. Indeed. What's being done about that? And this has been, again, a topic of debate here. Um, we have been, some of our, us as cruise lines operate globally, some yeah. of us operate in just one or two segments of the world. Um, and clearly costs vary depending where you are. But we've made, it, we've made the region aware that they need to get their pencil out sure. to look at, at the costs here because generally they tend to be on the higher side when we compare to, let's say, the Caribbean or even some of the Mediterranean ports. And that then makes them less uh, appealing to us. Clearly, we're, most of us are, are publicly listed companies. We're responsible to our shareholders sure. for our costs and we need the support of our partners to make sure our costs are as aggressive as possible. So Helen, to finish off, moving from the perspective of the operators to the passengers, and yes. one issue in this part of the world really is the visa requirements. How's that being addressed? Um, encouraging. We're not probably as far ahead as we would have liked uh, in actually having a, a visa actually in place, but we know there's been some positive movement in that direction. Um, the multi-entry visa is really specifically needed for the United Arab Emirates. Um, so I think if we can get that concluded, then that really opens up the, the opportunity even more for the destinations here to draw in uh, guests from really uh, all of those countries that currently can't participate in the visa waiver programme. So encouraging. Encouraging. So finishing there on a positive note regarding visas in this part of the world and also the global picture for cruising. Thanks. Thanks very much, Phil.